That's right, folks, we are back on Bug Out Bags yet again. Just a few misconceptions that we felt like needed to be addressed, so we're going to present them to you here in a short list. Top 5 misconceptions about bug out bags that apparently a lot of people seem to have. May not apply to you necessarily, but we're putting the list out there anyways. If you agree with it, let us know. If you don't, let us know. We always have the comments section open. So, without further ado, let's get started. In no particular order. Number one, your bag will only have to last three days. A lot of people associate that a bug out bag is a 72 hour bag, and that may not necessarily be the case. You may have it planned out that you are going to get wherever you are going within 72 hours, but that may not happen. You may be stuck out there longer, much longer. You could run into detours. You could run into trouble. Your 72-hour bag could turn into 72 days really quick. Remember, we're talking about an SHTF situation. You really don't know what's going to go down 100%. Furthermore, when you get to wherever you're going, you could find that it's been compromised. How many times have you heard about some poor prepper having their cabin or their shelter in the woods broken into? They've gone to it to check on it and found it raided and emptied out and all their supplies stolen. This happens. Unscrupulous hunters or hikers in the woods happen by and say, hey, no one's around. Steal all your stuff and sell it at the pawn shop. This actually happens. Not too often, but it does. And as often as it happens, for every one person that did that, there are 10 more who probably saw it and didn't do it because they're not like that. But that doesn't mean they won't be like that when shit hits the fan. And you could come to your cabin or your shelter and find that it's raided or otherwise occupied with hostiles. Then what are you going to do? Your bag is probably going to have to last a little bit longer than 72 hours. And just one addition here, for a lot of people, particularly people who live in urban areas, that bug out bag is a permanent solution because they don't have anywhere to go. A lot of preppers, they don't have a bug out location. Something to think about. Number two, once you set it up, you're done. Not necessarily true. You should check your bag and rotate it at least every few months. A lot of people think, and I know that many of you are probably wise to this by now, but I'm throwing it in here anyways. A lot of people think that they can set their bag up and lay it in the closet or leave it in the car and it's good to go, period. Not necessarily. I've mentioned this several times. It doesn't hurt to every once in a while, even every few months, like I said, to just take it apart and look at it, see if maybe it could be arranged better, see if something could be taken away or replaced or something can be added. That's part of prepping, is to try to be as prepared as possible. Number three, and this is a big one, that you can actually handle the bag. Many preppers cannot handle their bag. Not for any kind of long term anyways. If you put your bag on and walked out the door, could you go 10 or 15 miles? If you had to sprint down the street two or three blocks to get away from someone, could you sprint with that bag on? Too many preppers are people who just own stuff. They've got a whole stockpile of stuff or they have a bunch of supplies and they think they're ready and they're not. Because as I've stated several times in many of the videos, you are your own best prep. And what that means is try to be in the best possible shape that you can to be prepared as well as you can. I understand there are some people who just can't. They may have serious medical issues, so on and so forth. But just do the best that you can to be prepared. And that includes carrying that bag, working with it, seeing how far you can get with it. Those are all key issues. Number four, that your bag needs to look like someone else's. No, it doesn't. Just because someone has their bag set up a certain way and it looks really cool, looks really tactical, it doesn't matter. It may not be practical for you. You need to have your bag set up for what your personal needs are and what your environment is. 
Other people may make suggestions. We've made suggestions on this channel, but if it doesn't apply to you, that's fine. You do what you need to do to have your bag ready for your personal needs. Don't worry so much about what other people have. You can look, at, look at other bags. We look at other bags for suggestions and ideas. Maybe it's got a different layout. Maybe it's got a different item. Maybe it's missing something we have. Maybe it's got something we're missing. That's fine. But you don't have to tool your bag to be like anyone else's because they're not going to carry it. You are. Number five, the bag is all you need to be prepared. And this kind of ties in with the whole concept of if you can't carry it with you, you don't need it. But let's be honest, if you're really prepared, you don't even need the bag. If you got just stuck, you by yourself, with whatever you had on you at the time, a pocket knife, a pen, you should be able to improvise and find a way to make things work bag or no bag. So don't just assume that the bag is all that you need. And the reason I bring this up is because there's a lot of preppers who kick other preppers in the teeth, if you will, over their bags. Oh, you know, you don't need this. And why do you have that? And oh, that looks like it's too heavy. Maybe it's too heavy for you, but maybe that person can handle it. You don't know that. So don't judge other people that way. And you knew it was coming. I'll give you one more. I always like to throw you a bone here. Call it number six, if you will. I can go 72 hours without stopping. I've heard some preppers make this claim that they're just going to go and go and go. Ah, I don't intend to stop. I'm just going to keep going. Okay, you go ahead and try that and see how it works out for you. Have you ever even stayed awake for 72 hours before? Do you know what that feels like? Better yet, have you stayed awake and been active pretty much the entire time? I'll tell you what, I have, and it's not easy, and I wouldn't want to do it again. It is not that simple, even just to stay awake for 72 hours, let alone being physically active. It's very difficult, very taxing on the body. You're going to exhaust your body, you're going to wear yourself out, and you're going to wear your mind out, which is even worse. If your mind's not sharp, you're putting yourself in danger, and you're endangering the other people who might be with you. So don't just assume that you're going to plow forward for three straight days. If you absolutely have to, if there's no other choice because somebody is on you, I get it, but don't plan on it. Give yourself a break. So we hope you found this list informative. If you have any comments pertaining to the video, please go ahead and put them in the comment section down below. Anything that you want to add, go ahead and add it. It might be helpful to other viewers. It might be helpful to us. We appreciate your comments. Please give it a big thumbs up. It's the easiest way to show your appreciation for the videos. Please do share, and I can't emphasize that enough. Free speech on YouTube is getting buried, and we are no exception. Prepper channels are getting hit really hard because of YouTube's new practices. It puts us all the way down to the bottom of the search engine so people can't see the videos. So please do share the hell out of the video. Watch our other videos. We really do appreciate it. Please do subscribe if you have not subscribed already. We appreciate that. And remember to hit the notifications tab so that you can be alerted as to when new videos come out. So as always, stay frosty folks and thanks for watching.